If you've ever wondered how soldiers survived the frozen wastelands of the First World War, the answer isn't just courage or endurance. It was ingenuity. Beneath the mud, frost, and endless nights, men discovered a heating trick so effective it became military legend. It wasn't electric, it didn't rely on endless fuel, and it worked in places where ordinary stoves froze solid. This forgotten method, known among trench engineers as the flu loop heater, kept dugouts, tents, and even field hospitals warm when temperatures dropped below zero. And what's more fascinating, the same principle still works today for anyone trying to heat a shelter, cabin, or off-grid outpost with minimal resources. The brutal winter of 1916 forced armies to reinvent how heat was made and retained. World War I wasn't fought in cities or well-built bases, it was fought in open fields, turned into trenches stretching for hundreds of miles. These trenches were cold, wet and merciless. Soldiers slept in underground dugouts, dug into clay and chalk, surrounded by waterlogged walls that leached body heat. Wood was scarce, and coal deliveries were inconsistent. Metal stoves, when used, often froze or cracked under the strain of rapid heating and cooling. Something had to change. It was in this misery that a quiet revolution in heating took shape. Soldiers and engineers began experimenting with improvised flue systems, using discarded fuel cans, pipes and clay to create a kind of radiant heating system that could burn small amounts of fuel continuously without freezing or choking on smoke. These weren't just makeshift furnaces. They were engineered from necessity and refined through trial and error right in the trenches. The result was a heating method that stayed lit even in sub-zero conditions, used almost no wood and didn't fill the shelter with smoke. The secret was a buried flue system that trapped heat and kept frost away. The flue loop, or trench heater, worked on a simple but genius principle. Instead of letting heat escape straight out a chimney, soldiers extended their stovepipe horizontally through the ground before venting it outside. By burying or covering the flue with earth, the hot exhaust gases from the stove transferred heat into the surrounding soil before escaping. The dirt absorbed and radiated that warmth back into the dugout long after the fire burned out. It was essentially an early form of radiant floor heating. The ground acted as a massive heat sink, absorbing the warmth and slowly releasing it, preventing frost from creeping in and keeping the floor dry. Unlike open flames or exposed pipes that froze, the buried design shielded the hot air channel from wind and condensation, keeping the system working even when everything else turned to ice. Many accounts from the Western Front describe soldiers modifying biscuit tins or artillery shell casings to serve as stoves. They'd fill them with a mix of coal dust, wood scraps, or even animal fat, light them, and connect a makeshift flue pipe that ran through the wall or floor of the dugout. The trick was extending that pipe as long as possible underground, creating what they called a heat snake. The longer the run, the more heat was transferred into the ground, turning the entire dugout into a slow cooker of warmth. This simple trick worked because it used every bit of energy twice. In an age before efficient combustion systems, the flue loop design doubled heating performance. Most fires lose about 70% of their heat through smoke and exhaust gases. By forcing that heat through a buried channel, soldiers effectively recycled it. The warm exhaust heated the ground and the air before leaving the trench, 
keeping frost at bay for hours. This method also reduced smoke visibility, a huge advantage during wartime. A straight chimney vent was an easy giveaway to enemy spotters. The extended underground flue cooled the exhaust enough that by the time it exited, it was invisible in the cold air. Soldiers could heat their dugout safely without betraying their positions. It's one of those wartime innovations born from pure necessity. Quiet, invisible and efficient. For survivalists, off-grid builders or, you know, history enthusiasts experimenting with practical shelter design, this trick is completely replicable. The steps are simple but must be done right. Start with a small enclosed firebox or metal stove. A steel ammo box or thick-walled metal bucket can serve this role. Fit it with a horizontal outlet pipe about two to three inches in diameter. Instead of venting straight up, run that pipe horizontally through a trench dug about six to eight inches deep and at least ten feet long. Cover the pipe with soil or gravel to create thermal mass, then let the final end of the pipe rise slightly above ground outside the shelter for safe exhaust. When the stove burns, the buried flue warms the earth like a radiator, and the heat radiates back into your shelter long after the fire dies down. You can enhance the effect by placing flat stones or bricks above the pipe path inside the dugout. They'll absorb even more heat. One key lesson from the trenches, never use closed containers for fuel without vent holes and ensure proper draft. Soldiers often punched a small air intake hole near the base of their stove to keep the flame steady. With modern safety awareness, you can add a simple spark arrester or mesh over the exhaust to prevent flare-ups. The result? A near smokeless, continuous heat source that never freezes, never clogs with ice, and uses just a fraction of the fuel you'd need for an open fire. The same science later inspired rocket stoves and passive heating systems. What began as a trench innovation didn't die with the war. Engineers studying post-war field reports noticed how these improvised heating systems stayed functional even in the harshest conditions. The concept of maximizing exhaust heat before release eventually evolved into civilian heating systems most notably the rocket mass heater. In a rocket mass heater, the same principle applies. Hot gases travel through a long insulated tunnel that absorbs heat before venting out. It's the same First World War trench idea, just, you know, refined with better materials. Even modern passive home builders borrow the same concept, storing daytime heat in the ground or masonry and releasing it slowly at night. The soldiers didn't know it, but their desperate heating hack had laid the groundwork for an entire branch of sustainable engineering. The forgotten heating trick still teaches us how to outsmart winter. The Great War is often remembered for its brutality, but it was also a period of quiet invention. Men in impossible conditions found ways to create warmth where none should have existed. The never-freeze heating trick was one of those victories of mind over misery, a perfect balance between physics and practicality. For history buffs, it's a powerful reminder that survival isn't about having the best equipment. It's about understanding the forces of nature and bending them to your advantage. For modern preppers and builders, it's proof that efficient, smoke-free, low-fuel heating can be achieved with nothing but common sense and resourcefulness. If you found this deep dive into forgotten wartime innovation fascinating, 
go ahead and subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with fellow history enthusiasts. The past isn't just a record of survival. It's a manual for resilience that still works when the modern world goes dark.